Well, greetings, salutations, ahoy, mateys. It's me, your boy, Stefan Sitsani. I don't know why I hesitated on my own name. I was going to shorten it, kind of like Steph Curry, but I'm not that cool. I don't have that swag. I've got the cascading chestnut locks, but I don't have the chill by the docks. I don't know. See, I tried to rhyme. I'm working on my slam poetry, but right now it's like gentle nudge poetry. So I'll keep working on it. But while I do, I want to be here with you, kind of like Patrick Swayze behind you. Are you doing pottery right now? Are you doing ceramics? I'm not sure. Maybe you're just mowing the lawn. I want to be gently caressing you from the ears, just, just touching ever so gently those lobes, caressing them while I tell you about this amazing episode with Kim Lanid. She's a children's book author. She's an entrepreneur. She also has multiple degrees in counseling, psychology, and social work. And it's amazing. She's a hilarious person. We met on Twitter, which is kind of cool because usually the people that I meet on Twitter are in love with me or they want to murder me. And Kim wanted to do both. So I had her on the pod. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, Kim's an amazing person. She's very funny. She and her husband have an excellent sense of humor, although I don't know her husband personally, but I follow him on Twitter because I want to murder him. No, I'm kidding. But it was an awesome time. I hope you guys have a good time. What else is going on? I think, oh, I've got some dates coming up. Don't tell my wife. No, there's oh, sillies, you little geese, silly geese. Uh, not that. It's actually stand-up dates. I'm going to be hosting again at JP's Comedy Club in Gilbert with the magical mystical jp jim perry the guy the one the only the guy and it's gonna be a lot of fun it is going to be in august and i don't have the dates in front of me and i'm a horrible promoter but i'm gonna keep singing this song while i figure out the dates because he messaged me on facebook oh man that's pretty good it's kind of like uh reading rainbow i think at the end but anyway august 26th to the 28th Link will be in the show notes, perhaps. And I'm also going to be doing 10 minutes. I'm a booked spot at the Bridge Improv Theater. Woo-wee! Steph, can you do 10 clean minutes? Because it's supposed to be clean. I don't know. I'm trying to squeak up my material so that I can have some real, just some powder, some good old clean squeaky bleach that I can pour all over you guys and make you laugh and hopefully not blind you. But I'm excited for that, working on the material. And I just—I also wanted to give a shout out to local radio host, although it's nationally syndicated, the Dana Cortez Show, Anthony A. He has been a phenomenal um, support for helping me with hosting last time. And he also, dare I say, is a friend. And who knows what we're going to cook up together. Not meth, just letting you know. Yes, not meth. I can't broadcast that. But call me if you're interested. But we'll see. And follow him in the meantime. Anthony A. He is a delight. And that's it, guys. Is that it? No, I'm going to be going on vacation soon. Tomorrow, actually. That's why I'm kind of... I'm trying to pack these in. So I will probably be in Wyoming while you guys are listening to this in Yellowstone looking for bears. I heard they have an abundance of bears, maybe a couple twinks as well. So I might see, oh God, Stefan, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stay on track here. But yeah, I'll be having some fun. Cousin is getting married in Idaho. I've never been to Idaho, but I heard nothing about it because nobody talks about Idaho, but it should be fun. We'll get to see some fam. Hopefully this big old pimple will clear up because apparently I'm 15. I don't know. I'm glad at least that I don't have to go to prom, but I don't know. That was last week. So I think I can turn myself off here. I'm just spewing out words right now. So I'm going to let you guys step into the main part of the show. Thank you so much for listening, guys. If you haven't yet, see, I'm not done. Please leave a review, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Links are in the show notes for all that good stuff. And then follow support Kim buy her books. She's got some good children's books. So if you've got some kids or if your reading level isn't that great, go ahead and check them out. Links will be in the show notes and follow her on Twitter. And that's it. Love you guys so much. Big old smooch. Here's the show. Woo! Hello. Hi. How are you? My, my dog has to visit. <laughs> oh, hey, pup. How are you? 
this is breezy and Hello. she all she always does this before i start every class Aww. every time i say hello into my computer she comes and she knocks my ear plugs out of my ears <laughs> but she's a friggin awesome icebreaker when i have new students oh my god oh that is so cute Oh, yeah. usually, usually my cat comes on as an icebreaker and just claws my face. So <laughs> it's also for everyone else involved. It's fantastic. But for me, it's quite the pain. So I, there's a lot of foundation here. Was, and I've closed the door. Gonna, I was going to say you cover it really well, because I used to have cats and claw marks are part of the deal. That yeah, they're just part it's included. It's like, uh, you know, the Happy Meal <laughs> comes with the French fries, no matter what you do. The cat comes with the scratch. So even if you don't want the French fries, because you're like, trying to lose weight or trying to work on your cholesterol or whatever, exactly. or salt makes you bloated, you know, you still have to have the fries. So oh, Exactly. Yep. The cat is like the happy meal of violence, the happy meal pet of violence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love that. <laughs> that is it. The cat is the happy meal. Oh my God. That's great. Oh man. But it's the happy meal you probably shouldn't give to kids either because no. <laughs> it's usually for adults because the poor but kids it, they might. Well, it, it the cat sometimes the kids need to learn. Like back when I was a kid, if we would have had a cat, my mom would have been like, You pull the cat's tail, you're gonna get scratched. Nowadays, parents are wusses and they're like, Oh, honey, don't pet the cat. The cat's gonna hurt you. And it's like you pull a cat's tail, you know. You're right. You gotta, you gotta know what, or you you tell the kid or the person, but you'd think that they would know, but a kid doesn't always know. So you just say, look, honey, don't pull the cat's tail. If the kid pulls the cat's tail, then they're exactly gonna that, have to learn that you're you know what you're absolutely right and i feel like kids are just so sheltered nowadays i yes but back back when i was born i was born into a pile of cats so i knew <laughs> straight from birth they scratched off the umbilical cord the doctor didn't even need the scissors it was just like well let's let's have this right here right meow and i <laughs> i learned no pulling tails no, no, uh, petting too hard. I was just, you know, that's how, it, that's how it worked when I was a kid. So I think these kids nowadays, they're born into like a, a, a silver pillow or they're born on a silver platter. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and no gluten or peanut butter can be touching oh the platter or have touched it. God. It's crazy. So pretty much your mom's pussy was in a pile of pussies. Sorry, I had, I, had, I, had, I had to go there because you said the meow. I had to go there. It's okay. I was surrounded by pussy since I was born, I guess. So not the kind I want, but it, I, I, that was an <laughs> excellent. That was an excellent observation. Oh, God. Well, you, you said meow. That's how the people at Chewy, when I, where I get like all my dogs things, like, yes. and I, I chat with them and they're like, we're positively excited to help you. So I beat them to it now because I know all their lines. And so I'm like, I'm positively appreciative of all of your help. And I don't think they realize that I'm onto them because <laughs> <laughs> they had, they just go back. They don't say, oh, wow, that was really good. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I need validation, validate me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Do they call, by the way, when you send them an email, do you say I'm bubbling this up to your litter box? Is that? Cause no. Hey, oh. missed opportunity. 
if I still had cats, I would. My dogs, they don't do litter boxes. Oh, okay. So then it would just be a canned response, just like a, a nice can of friskies or fancy feast, if you will. It's yeah, or if my dogs ate canned food, it would be like Alpo or um, the the fancy like little Caesars in the pouches, which is all disgusting. Wait, in my whoa. opinion. The little Caesars makes dog food? Yeah. They make it in those little things that unless you're like have the tiniest little child fingers, it um you have to like it's in like this little plastic thing and it's like trying to open um pudding, you know, like with that little um, Oh yeah, freaking, the little freaking, snack packs. Yes, yeah. with that little freaking tab that like you you when you're pulling it, you wind up throwing the whole thing and getting pudding all over the place because oh, <laughs> yes oh man it's more it's more messy than bill cosby's career it's crazy <laughs> <when> you... <laughs> and it's pretty much chocolate is the cover of shit which is pretty much what he did to his career he shit yes, on it <laughs> pretty much he was putting it in a terrible place but i <laughs> <laughs> I like where this podcast is going, by the way. This is oh phenomenal. so uh, if I could if I could say that comment about your mom and hopefully she'll never ever hear that because <laughs> um I don't that's know if not... you know she's uh she's my number one fan and she actually lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So get you... the fuck out. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh my God. I, I didn't tell you that I am totally gullible. I, if you <laughs> tell me something, I'm not going to call you a liar. I am going to believe what you said. And you said that so deadpan and it's such a possibility. So uh, wait, which was a lie? Is your mom your number one fan or is the lie she lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Unfortunately, both of them are lies. My mom is gravely disappointed in me, and she lives in Cottonwood, Arizona. So those are both lies. Okay, <laughs> well, me... we have some we have something in common because my mother is completely disappointed in me as well. Oh my gosh. Well, hey, you know what? I think that's a beautiful transition for the intro where I'm gonna say <laughs> hello, everybody. All those cool cats and kittens and dogs that are trying to pop open their little Caesars pouch of food. My name is Stefan Satani, and this is a comedy advice podcast. Joining me today, a very special guest to everybody except possibly her mom. She's a children's <laughs> book author. She's an entrepreneur. She collects penguins. Everybody, please welcome Kim. I don't know how to pronounce her name, so I'm going to give it a stab. Lenon. Is that you made it French? I love that. Oh my gosh. You in fact the people at CVS they they say lay not. So you you at least didn't pronounce the D, so you really went for it French. I sock gray blue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was either gonna go really French or I was gonna go lean ad. So I didn't know which one to, on the end of the spectrum of very French to very American, I didn't know where to go. So I went French. You were to be closer, classy. you were closer American. Oh, oh. So how do you say your last name, by the way? How is Lainid. it pronounced? Lainid. It's just, my, it's just my husband's name backwards. Daniel, it's, oh, when we Lainid. got married, since we decided we weren't going to have like biological people kids to pass names down onto, we decided to make up our own last name. So my last name, my maiden name is Scott. So okay. try to put it that backwards didn't work. And then we took his former last name, put it together with my former last name, which was Fascati would have been really nice because we're both Italian. It sounds Italian, oh, right? Hell, yo, yes, mamma mia. Very Italian. Kimberly Fiscotti. 
it but, sounds like something you would order after after dessert, like an aperitif, <laughs> perhaps, or a digestif, like a limoncello and a little biscotti at Olive Garden. Uh, mm. Delicious. Yes, 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 yes. Well, oh. we decided to go with something very obscure, and I think only one person has gotten that it's his name backwards. So he's Daniel oh. Laned, and I'm Kimberly Laned. What a wonderful and badass, shall I say, way to just live your life. I love how you're pioneering just names. You're not like, you know what? I don't want the name that was given to me. I'm just going to make my own name, make my own journey, make my own life. God. Yeah. Carpe diem, man. Carpe diem. Man. Oh my God. There are no limits, no limits. That I is... mean, okay, there are some limits, but <laughs> <laughs> there had there have to be some limits. But when it comes to names, like I don't know if you watch Friends, but yes. there's the Friends episode where Phoebe and Mike and Mike change Phoebe changes her name to, um, oh crap, I should know that Princess banana hammock and mike goes to her do you know what a hammock banana hammock is and she's like no and so then he says i'm changing my name to crap bag and she's like first name then crap bag he's like no crap first name crap last name bag crap bag (laughs) oh that's beautiful Absolutely phenomenal. I'm thinking about what I should change my last name to because I, I like Sitani. It's got a little bit of a ring to it. But if I could make my own, maybe I would un-Italian myself. Maybe I would just go full on white guy and just be like Stefan Powerhouse or something. Maybe I just make myself a wrestler, I guess. Stefan the Undertaker. Maybe that could be. I, I got I got to ask you, when people look at the spelling of your name, how many people have called you Stephen? Many, many a folk okay. have called me Stephen. And then many a folk okay. have not even gotten my last name close. It's usually Stephen Spaghetti or Stephen Satan. So I have <laughs> been called the Lord of the Underworld and many more. Badass. <laughs> yes. Badass. Stefan, Lord of the Under. There you go. Oh USA, man. Lord of the Underworld. Your wife, Mrs. Lord of the Underworld. Oh my God. Stefan, you gotta go there. I have to go there. And I'll I'll bring a postcard or I'll send a postcard of the underworld and my experience yes. of it because that sounds out of this world, incredible. But you know, th- I'm gonna take a step back too, okay. Kim and talk about how we met in a magical place <laughs> that was almost out of this world, AKA Twitter, where no. I had released the episode, one of the previous episodes of a comedy advice podcast with Colin Mockery. Mm-hmm. And it seems to have caught your attention. And then we started chatting and we became pals. Yeah. And I'm curious, yeah. what was the impression when you saw the the interview, were you thinking, who the hell is this Italian wannabe that looks like the spawn of the underworld sun, perhaps? <laughs> no, I was jealous. <laughs> well, not jealous because I got serenaded to by Colin and I got a, a Colin hug and have seen all of his um, Zoom shows with Brad. But to talk one-on-one with Colin. And like you said, you were fangirling. Oh yes. my God, when I was watching that interview, I was re-fangirling. I was fangirling through you. I was like, this, I gotta meet this guy. I gotta somehow bug the shit out of this guy so that he has to shut me up and put me on his podcast. And it huh. worked, it worked. My oh, devious man. plan work. No, but I love <laughs> comedians and Colin is like right up there, like at the top. Yes. And 
I, because of COVID and like all of the Zoom shows that comedians yes. have been doing to try and make money and also with cameos, my husband and I give each other comedian cameos all the time. We gave each other Jeff Davis for Christmas. Oh, he, nice. He gave me a totally unromantic Ian bag for Valentine's Day, who pretty much told me to ha that my husband was a cheap bastard, <laughs> giving me a fucking Ian bag cameo for Valentine's Day. But it's the way we are. These are the people we are. We like this stuff. I, I like romance, but I appreciate the funny stuff i appreciate a good um out of the like i mean roses are nice but roses die i've got ian bag forever mm. i've got this cameo forever so yes yes roses are nice but a rose with a punchline is even better so if you, oh my god if you pull it out it, they should have they should have that. It's a you know, like those popsicles where you just lick it until yes. it's just the stick and then there's a little joke on there. They should yes. have roses once they fully blossom, they've got a little joke inside of them. I love that. I love that. There's an invention. Look at us. Just Cre just creative. Creative. Oh just spurring each other's, uh, mixing each other's creativity into one genius idea. Um, we could call it uh, prose, pro prose something. Prose, a rose, rose jokes. A rose, rose jokes. by any other, I'm trying to think, go a little Shakespeare, but then put a twist on it, like a rose by any other name. Yes. Um, oh, uh, man. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it yeah. out by the end of this podcast. The idea will fully <laughs> blossom and we'll, <laughs> we will, we will pour some water on it and then just let it grow a little bit. We'll give it a little bit of sunlight, but it, it definitely needs fertilizer. And I think between the two of us, we'll fertilize it really well. <laughs> uh, yes. I feel like everything that's come out of my mouth has been pure manure. So I feel like it should be ready and rip roaring to go at the end. Just a little sun and, and water. Yeah. Oh, man, making it fertile. But you said you liked comedy. You said you like romance. You also, um, you are also a children's author. So writing is a big passion of yours. How did that come about? Because I know two of your books, or I, I saw one on Amazon and link can be mm -hmm. in the show notes for everybody that's trying to entertain those darn kids that are on Zoom <laughs> the whole time. Um, and, and in the house, the dog who was afraid of Howley Ween. Oh, love yes. that pun. Just premium pun in there. Love oh, I know. Right? Right? Uh, it wrote uh, itself because <laughs> it happened on Hollow. It And it's a true story. Both of, both of my children's books are based off of true stories. Really? Okay. Yeah. Please do tell what the inspiration behind this ghouly tale. Well, for oh, kids, so it's not too ghouly. No, it's actually not. It, it, well, um, two of my dogs that both have passed away now, um, oh. one of them howled at everything. And it had, I wrote it in on Halloween and okay. I wrote it in about an hour. Was he a construction worker in a former life? Just, just a <laughs> howler? No, no. He, <laughs> no, he, he could have he could have been. He totally could have <laughs> been. He definitely. But he he just he he was a howler and um I just I decided that I was going to dedicate the book. I didn't I wrote it back when he was still alive, but I didn't actually okay get it into editing and illustrations for quite a while i'm i have like a million things going on at a time sometimes and so some things get put on the back burner and so 
fair. A number of years later, we had Breezy, who you saw at the beginning. So she wound up in the story also. Wow. So, okay, man. Wait, what was Howler's name? I, I did I did you say it and I didn't catch it? Did it just no. fly through the breeze? No, what I did in the book was I used descriptors because my books are for elementary aged kids. Okay. So I used, okay. he was the dog with the pointy eared dog with the fluffy tail. And then my other dog was the floppy eared dog with the swishy tail. And then. Nice, nice. I hope they're but, appropriately credited on IMDb as the floppy eared dog with the the bushy tail. The Can fluffy I get it right? tail. The, the fluffy, fluffy tail. tail. You're okay. close. Very close. I don't have IMDb. Do I? Since I have two books, do I get to do an IMDb page, or is that conceived? Yes. They no. Oh, absolutely not. It is. I think they they're changing it to We MDB because it's inclusive of books and podcasts too and other Ooh. creative works i did make that up i don't know if that's the case but uh, <laughs> it, they should be we mdb if if they haven't but okay i'll weird. have i'll have to look that up there i'll have go. to get myself out there because yes. both of my books are under different names my first book is under my name name because i wrote it before i got married and then my second book is under my married name so if people go on Amazon, they and they look for how do you mean, but they can't find Snot Man. It's because Snot Man is under my maiden name. That's right. That's probably but why you didn't find it. I didn't find it in your because your author profile didn't include mommy. There's a Snot Man standing next to you. Full title. Also, link will be in the show notes as soon as I find it but interesting <laughs> okay okay so was that also you said it was based off of a true experience who is the snot man it's the, hopefully that's not the husband because you wrote it before you got no married. no okay. this was this was also written in an hour it was based off of a chat with a friend that i've been friends with since kindergarten okay and we were chatting on facebook and okay. she told me that her child, who was a baby back then, um, was sick. And he, she said, snot was everywhere. And so out of curiosity, I said, oh, what color? <laughs> you know, just because. And Making conversation. She, she, <laughs> exactly. And she told me. And so then and there, I thought, huh there's a book there somewhere so the the all my books teach a lesson in addition to having amazing i have an amazing illustrator oh my god he is the best mike motts if you ever oh, need okay. it if anyone ever needs a, an illustrator i will recommend him but um okay link in the, the show notes to wherever you can find him too i'll find that i, I am will. a little I'm a show notes scout. I will just sniff out those links like they're little turnips or truffles, and I will put them in the show notes for you all. <laughs> By the way, your Kim, your video did freeze. It looks like you are frozen in a concerned state. So I don't know if you are. I hope you're happy and jovial, but no, in case I'm you are concerned, blink twice, but you have to audibly blink twice, like blink, blink, because I can't blink, see the face. Blink, blink. Right now, I'm just getting a blank, blank. I'm not getting blank, blank. But, oh, and Kim, your video's gone. Okay, uh, you're still here, though. The audio is here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great time to talk about Squarespace. Do you need a website? Oh, I bet you don't. But it, just in case you do, just to tell all your friends at the party, you should check out my website because I'm a nerd. Go to squarespace.com slash economy advice podcast for 15% off. That's right. Squarespace.com slash economy advice podcast for 15% off. Of Squarespace. Is Squarespace even a domain provider? Do they make websites? I don't know. I'm just buying time for Kim to get back on the video. And, uh, you know, why not? I, why don't I just 
do a dub, do a promo for my actual CBD. Do you take CBD? Does it help you relax? Does it help you focus? But you wonder where is it coming from? Well, at Farmhouse CBD, it's all from that little farmhouse, I guess. It's all organic and it is, it's not chemically extracted. It's mechanically extracted. So there are no chemicals. And I don't know if Kim is back, but I'll keep talking about it. It, they just low heat or high heat and they just press on it. They just pound into those hemp plants. Like my poor mom. No, not my mom. I don't want to go back to that image, but just go to the link in the show notes and you'll get 15% off CBD products. There I'm, she is. I'm back. She's back. And I mean, better than ever. It's like Rambo 2 over here. <laughs> Part two. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't speak French. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Uh, is that a uh, cheese? But okay. you do, though, because you said my last name, my you tried to say my last name with such an amazing French accent. <laughs> well, that's what three <laughs> levels of Rosetta Stone will do for you. Uh, <laughs> I ended up, I was a big stoner. So I did Rosetta Stone French and I did Rosetta Stone Portuguese. And I did, I think that was it. I, I tried Tagalog because I had some Filipino roommates uh -huh. that I wanted to impress, but that didn't work out. So but the Brazilian Portuguese smash hit home run ended up marrying myself. One of them Brazilians. And Beautiful. we're just having, I can tell, I can understand all the shit that my father-in-law <laughs> is talking about me now. So yeah, it's great. Oh, moto born, moto born. Wow. <laughs> Você fala Portuguese também. Very nice. Oh, uh only a so, little bit most uh, of my most of my students are portuguese so i learned a teeny tiny bit oh. Obriga obrigado. obrigado very nice very the, the only difference the only tweak that i'll make to that is for a woman you say obrigada mm -hmm. with an a at the but, end instead well you're not a woman if you were a woman, then I would say obrigada to you. Uh, if no, 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 I'm no, no. Thanks. If you're no, no, no. I, I, if I'm a man, I'll say obrigado, and then if you're a woman, you say obrigada. Really, my students lied to me. Tell them, oh yeah. My tell God. them. Tell them, vai tomar no cu, filho da puta, which is kind of like uh, thank you so much for everything that you taught me. No, it means go well, fuck yourself, I, you son of a bitch. I know, I know Spanish, so oh, okay. I knew, okay. I understood. <laughs> Spanish is the base of a lot of Portuguese. So if my students and I are having a communication thing, I'm like, como se dice en español, and then they'll say uh, it in español, and I'll I'll find a root in there somewhere and naturally Sorry. from what you said i got puta so oh very nice <laughs> see i'm only here i mean this is a comedy advice podcast people to give advice and teach us to be better people with <laughs> with great words like <laughs> filho da puta and so i feel like we're just getting elevated to a higher place and oh yeah flipped upside down we'll be trudging ourselves down into the underworld but you know what that's my last the name i'm just my legacy so exactly and it's like the upside down in stranger things Oh, you watch yes. Stranger, the upside down. I, you know what? The Demogorgon has entered the waiting room, so I might let him come in, but I'm a little terrified. So I'm just going to keep him waiting in that waiting room until we end the podcast. And then hopefully You're Eleven will join. Oh, you are scared of the Demogorgon? I'm terrified. The Demogorgon's so scary. I oh, he is not scary. Gary, all you have to do is roll a 20 on a 20 sided dice and you can kill that fucker. I have no die though. So I will die Real? because oh, okay. I, yes, I, I'm just out of luck. I will send you one of my 20 sided. Like I mentioned in one of my, as one of my potato chips. Yes, I might be pretty, look a little fancy. I am a nerd. <laughs> Xbox. Dragon Age, Magic the Gathering. Um, oh. 
Oh yeah, I've got uh, my nephew. I had my nephews make um, decks for me, and I'm like, make a really good deck. So they, I'm like, and then I would always ask them like, which one of my decks would fairly be fair against one of your decks? Because oh. they would make like really killer decks, and I'm like, I want a fair game. I want fair fights. So. Nice, nice. Oh, I wish I knew anything about Magic the Gathering, except um, I wasn't allowed to play it because I wasn't, I was too nerdy, actually, so that my friends would kick me out. But uh, too um, so I was, nerdy? I was. I, you know, I was more of a Pokemon card kind of guy. So oh, okay. I was like, hey, guys, you want to check out my holographic Charmander? And they're like, no, we're playing Magic. <laughs> Nerd, can you get out of here? <laughs> Well, so. <laughs> in my past life, when I was a psychologist, I worked with kids and my kids would come in, into my office and they would play with their Pokemon cards. So I got a little taste of Pokemon also, but I don't remember it. That's probably the way it should be. It's almost like tasting one of the fake cheese from the cheese whiz. Mm -hmm. You may have tasted it, but you decided I'm not going to remember this ever again because I'm going to decide... <laughs> <laughs> not to do it so that's kind of like pokemon pokemon is the cheese ways of the card world it's just ugh. but so. on a true cheese steak in philly cheese whiz is the best melted cheese whiz on a, a cheese steak in philly that is the only way that's how that's what makes a philly cheese steak a philly cheese steak is the cheese whiz mm. fun fact fun fact I, yes. like Brad always says, fun fact. That's that's a really good point. And then in other places where they substitute the cheese whiz with actual cheese, they call it instead of a Philly cheese steak, they call it a good sandwich. So it makes sense. <laughs> don't, don't, no, don't, well, I'm not, I'm not from Philly. I'm just saying, if you, if you ever make it out to the East Coast, definitely you got to nice. at least give it a shot. I, you, you know, I lived give in, it a shot. I lived in New York up until 2018. So we did go to Philly. What's a, by the way, a Bethlehem cheesesteak is that, do you put the nativity scene inside the <laughs> cheesesteak? <laughs> oh. It gets worse. It gets worse. You got to no, stop. No. no, no, God, don't, don't, don't. You're right up my alley. Um, <laughs> no, actually there's crucifixes in it and there's there's wise men there baby jesus isn't there yet because bethlehem is the christmas city so it's not until if, if you have a, a cheese if you get a cheese stick on christmas day then you get a baby a bonus baby jesus a bonus and you might they might sprinkle a little uh, myrrh and frankincense in there as well Mm. that's what they call oh. the spices how did you know <laughs> a bethlehem cheesesteak is special myrrh frankincense and yeah uh, some gold shavings on there oh delicious. oh the gold shavings oh De just decadent oh oh my man. gosh Buonissimo. oh man well, you know what? I'm getting hungry. I know it's uh, it's nine o'clock your time. It's six o'clock my time, which is around oh, wow. dinner time. Yeah. So I am. Mm, I might go for an Arizona cheesesteak, which is basically just cactus with, uh, <laughs> fried with some cheese whiz on it. But uh, before I break for dinner, I wanted to get into some advice with you, Kim, because you seem like you you have multiple degrees. Mm -hmm. psychology, social work, and a master's. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like you are super well, and you are the best at magic. You've got an impressive deck. So uh, I feel like we can combine our forces and uh -huh. I'll just shove some Pokemon cards in this conversation. And then we'll just answer some questions okay. and uh, we'll give some advice. How does that sound? I'll try, I'll do my best. All right. Well, these are very serious questions. So if you don't give the best advice, I will just expel you from the Zoom. It's happened um, before. Colin um, was almost thrown out for some advice that he gave. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Love you, yes. Colin. <laughs> I was just going to say, 
You better take all that back. Reel it back. Reel it back. Oh, my God. Yes. Delete, delete, delete. Oh, God. Editing that out for sure. <laughs> yes, definitely. <sighs> all right. Well, we can keep this brief. We'll wind down with this. Where, before we get into the questions, inspirational quotes. I'm a big quote guy. I don't know if you are, Kim, but I've got oh, a my. quote here. Mm-hmm. But I like to ask my guests if they have mm-hmm. any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days or help them write a children's book or two, or, um, you know, just be able to get wonderful red hair. Didn't even talk about that. It's just oh, the star that- of the show, really. I feel like I need to spruce up my chestnut locks because that flaming hot red is just well, taking thank- the whole Zoom. Thank you. That's the Irish. I'm an Irish, I did, I'm Italian, Irish, English, Irish, Scotch, Irish, French, Canadian. I did not get the Italian complexion. I go out in the sun and for like two seconds and then I'm like red. So Mm. I got the blue eyes and the red hair. Wonderful. You you look like a grown up Wendy from Wendy's. (laughs) I do, have the, I do have the freckles, but I covered them up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, do you have any inspirational quotes that you would like to? If not, that's okay. But um, if you've got any to share with the group, well, and by the group, I mean me. <laughs> well, what I always grew up with and this will be my like two seconds of seriousness Please is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I have been done unto in not a very nice, in not nice ways. I've been done unto in very amazing ways. And I just feel like it's, to me, it's classic. It never goes out of style, or in my opinion, should never go out of style. And yeah, I, I just went and then Joe Gatto from um, Impractical Jokers, he is always wearing really cool shirts. And every time he does a hashtag on Twitter, it's always be kind. And Aww. that's just simple to me. I freaking love that and sometimes simple is the best just like a philly cheesesteak has that simple old cheese whiz still delicious and you know never goes out of style maybe gold is going out of style so we could uh, rebrand it to the bitcoin rule where (laughs) be kind to others but I i think it still rings true and i feel like i have been you put it so poetically i have been done unto not so kindly in some ways and I don't appreciate it. And I feel, Mm -hmm. but I do have to say that those moments, especially in my childhood, whenever I got bullied or, or whatever, Mm -hmm. it taught me to appreciate those good moments. And it also Mm -hmm. taught me to try and be a better person to others because it started to put things in perspective. So unfortunately, one of my, I bullied one of my my next youngest brother for a little while. And then we became best friends in high school, mm-hmm. which was awesome. And I'm so sorry to him for all those years. I was a, a big old dick, um, <laughs> a big old can of cheese whiz for him. But I, I feel like that rule is, is such a good one to, especially now to remember mm-hmm. where it's so easy to just type something yep. and, and be mean to people. So thank you, Kim. Cause I feel like I, and, and that's one of the reasons that you, you um, caught my eye too on Twitter, because it just seemed like you were super nice. And it seems like that's the ilk of the Colin and, and whose line community is because, yes. and, and that's why I like it. Cause everybody's very nice, oh. very, for the most part, <laughs> very nice <laughs> and very encouraging. So it was, well, it was very cool. And even when, and it's so easy to tell that even in their Zoom show between Colin and Brad, and even when they're in their live show, you know, they play off each other. But Mm -hmm. in the big picture, you know that it's jokes, that they don't mean it. And if you think that they're being serious, 
in my opinion, you're not looking at it as humor. And, yes. you know, to me, humor and comedy is meant to entertain. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Otherwise, in my opinion, it wouldn't be called comedy. So. Yes, it would be called let's all kill ourselves because this life, it just sucks. It and would, I feel like yeah. comedy, comedy does, it's, it, it's a beautiful way to be able to change the color or the hue mm -hmm. on a dark situation. And, exactly. and, and it, it really, comedy has made my life so much better and yep. it's made it so good that I want to spread it no, I'm not, that's why I don't wear any mask on this show. Cause I just want to <laughs> laughter, <laughs> laughter and outside. I still wear a mask, but, but, uh, inside I do not. And on this podcast, I do not. Cause I just want to spread that love and laughter. So that's exactly a wonderful thing. Well, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, before I shed tears, I'm going to go on into my inspirational quote and Kim, okay. you can tell me how this speaks to you. This is not by any person whatsoever. This is actually by a robot named Inspirobot. And what Inspirobot's main purpose is, is he just plunges into the depths of scholarly works and maybe Reddit and uh, I don't know, maybe some pornographic websites. And he just takes some of the wisest <laughs> words from all those places and just makes a beautiful inspirational quote. So... I will I'm read this intrigued. one. I'm okay, intrigued. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, usually a lot of the guests just leave by this point after I explain <laughs> Inspirobot. I didn't make it. It's there. It's, uh, it's somebody made it. It's called inspirobot.me is the website. And if you go there, click, it'll generate a quote for you. Oh, so. really? I, I seriously, I thought it was like one of the things that you had in your office with you that was part of your show. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. That I'm would be, learning behind yeah. the scenes stuff. This is yes, cool. yes, that's right. And you know, very but cool. I do have a prototype of Inspirobot that will be helping me with production and video. So uh -huh. you might see him walking around the screen. He is a little lost. He doesn't know directions yet. <laughs> but when he runs into a wall, he will be like, "Do unto others as you would yourself." So it is very inspirational. All the so he's like and, he's like a Roomba. That spouts off inspirational quotes. He's an inspiroomba. In yes. I was I was just gonna say that I <laughs> I swear I swear to God I was just about to say inspiroomba. And and you know what? It's because his quotes suck because they're you'll <laughs> you'll find out from this one, <clears throat> which I'm about to read. Inspirebot says this week. We cannot solve our problems by electrocuting ourselves, but we can solve our problems by selling out our surroundings. As I said, they suck. So, no, I, I love that. That can be taken poetic. I'm a poet also. Um, electrocuting ourselves. So, it'd be something about shocking. Mm -hmm. Like, shocking people not like physically shocking but like with news like shocking good news hopefully looking at the positive side shocking good news like baby new dog something like that what was the second part okay so we, we cannot solve our problems by electrocuting our, ourselves but we can solve our problems by selling out our surroundings Selling out selling. our surroundings. So that would be maybe not selling out in a negative way, like the negative connotation of selling out, more right. like sharing. I would say instead of selling out, sharing our surroundings. So we like can- Like farming. Yes. We are selling out the land to just make a sick profit by just making corn but it's for the good of humanity because we're making corn for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're on the right or the left, you like corn, maybe not dairy because yeah. there are some dairy intolerance here, but yeah. I mean, corn at least. Corn. And that's, I'm not sure why nobody has a corn allergy because that's probably the most modified 
meal or food out there but i mean we have corn that's bulletproof by now there are certain genuses that fucking superpower corn so i don't know but anyway that's a tangent far kim i'm so glad you brought us down this winding path of meaning because inspirebot just pushed us off the cliff and you were able to get us in in the right depths of see inspirobot does not always suck and inspire roomba Maybe Inspira Roomba sucks, but sucking up all the crap that's on the floor. Think about it. Positive spin on ins Inspira Roomba. Sucking isn't always bad. Sometimes, like when you suck liquid up a straw, you're getting, I use a straw with my coffee. So in that case, sucking is really good. Oh, you're, oh my God. Oh my God, Kim, I think you're onto something here where when I say this sucks, I'm going to be like, this is amazing. So <laughs> when I tell you at the end of the episode, this episode sucked, it's going to be like, this episode <laughs> was incredible. We need a new word for when something is bad. Because when this sucks, it's like this pops. Maybe this pops. Because when something pops, it's usually not good. A tire. Right. And fireworks fireworks and, and you have dogs fire oh. other, otherwise fireworks are amazing i have not been able to enjoy fireworks in over 20 years but i don't care i'd rather have my dogs you know what i hope that they have just like with guns they have silencers mm -hmm. i'm sure they're gonna have silencers for fireworks one of these days where it just goes my dog my dogs hear the shh they, they know, they can sense the fireworks. They don't even have to hear it. Oh. They know. And so um, when my first dog, when he went deaf, I knew that he couldn't hear anymore because he did not react to thunder or a firework. And oh. in a way, his deafness was almost a good thing because I taught him everything with hand signals, but he could no longer be um, tormented by all of the really, really, really loud sounds that used to scare him. So. Mm, a blessing in disguise. Exactly. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, good things come, you just have to listen for them. Exactly. Unless you went deaf, then you have to just rely on pure gut instinct. But exactly that's, that's great well we're gonna dive into our first question this first okay. question it's from the reddit advice column and it says basketball court there's these kids who always play basketball on my street and it attracts a big crowd of children recently they moved the court closer to my house and now i'm worried about my own property in particular my car i worry that the basketball will bounce and hit my car any ideas of what i should do if anything Bub bubble wrap the car yeah okay get, like, i was thinking the basketball like, well the kids the kids that are playing basketball they don't give a shit so if you really want to practice i live in a townhouse complex people don't give a shit about each other's property they let their mm. dogs run free they make all noise and everything and so pretty much if you want to protect your car from the pending baskets you know how they make those covers to protect your car against like the elements and they're just like plain covers bubble wrap cover oh yes yes bubble, yes, yes. bubble wrap cover for and everyone who moves into an apartment complex or townhouse complex should be automatically given to for yes. free. I love this. And you know what? With the prolifer, that's a genius idea, Kim. I love it. And it just got me thinking with the proliferation of our smartphones, where we all mm -hmm. have to buy a case for our yes. phone so it doesn't crack. Why mm -hmm. aren't we, but why aren't anybody making car cases? Like you, you could just pop it on. You know, yes. it has the little the little pops in the on the bottom, so you could just click it in, 
And then yeah. you have a beautiful case so your car doesn't get scratched and it doesn't, uh, the windshield yep. won't break. It's just, mm -hmm. and you could have customized cases. So if you like Guns N' Roses, you can have that on the top. So yeah. Like, oh yeah. Or you can have your, your, you could have Breezy too. And you'd be like, oh, I love my pop right there on top. Yes, personalized. And they're, then you have an app so you can check on, so that you can keep an eye on your bubble wrap car. And yeah. you can upgrade, you can, and plus, Oh my gosh, well, then car washes would go out of business because nobody would need to use car washes anymore. So oh, then the yeah. people that work at the car washes. But you so, know what? That's okay because all car washes are used for laundering money anyway. And they use exorbitant prices for car washing because but they're that, using, But go ahead. No, I was just going to say Walter White and Skyler never would have been able to launder all that money had they not been able to buy car washes. So oh, I, I got to right. keep I got to keep the car washes in business just for Walter just, and Breaking Bad sake. Sorry. You're right. And and they wouldn't have been able to afford breakfast for poor Walter Jr., who was oh, constantly my God. asking for breakfast. And the so. bacon and the bacon at every breakfast and, and his special birthday bacon. You can always tell a car wash family by the bacon. If it's bacon every day. <laughs> you okay. own a car. You got a car wash and you're laundering money. Oh, my God. Anyone yeah. who can have real bacon every day, you got to be laundering money and you're doing it at a car wash. Yeah. When my friends come over, I'm like, you want some breakfast? I've got some Kellogg's pops over here. I'm like, do you yes. have any bacon? I'm like, what? Do I own a car wash? <laughs> Ridiculous. Are you calling me a meth dealer? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah exactly. oh, man. I used to, I used to be able to do such a good Jesse impression, but then it slowly started turning into Badger. I was like, no. Hey. Hey, Jesse, you want to like do some math? What are you doing? Oh my God, that is Badger. I love it. <laughs> oh, like, like, oh my God, that is like so tubular, you know? <laughs> Yo, like, Mr. White, we should, bitch, we should. Oh, see, it's turning into Badger. God <laughs> dang it. Oh, uh, you were so close. I love uh, you. But the thing is, is anyone can do Jesse. Not everyone can do Badger. That is a good point. There yes. you and go. I feel like I won't be able to do Badger for long because it just scrapes <laughs> the inside of my throat, like 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 one of my cats on my cheeks. And so yeah. it's just, hey, what do you do? I don't know how he talks like that. He's like, hey, uh, uh, I'm at McDonald's. Do you want something, bro? It's just, uh, <laughs> there's a ghost well, inside of him trying to escape. Unless that's his real voice. Imagine if that's his real voice and he's like not, you know, trying. Now I'm going to have to YouTube and find an interview with the actor to see if that's his real voice. Because, you know, on the 70s show, um, the guy that plays uh, Fez, yes. his, his accent is a compilation did you know of like five different accents his accent is not any accent it it's huh. when when they when they made his character they wanted to make him even more unique so they took a whole bunch of accents and they compilated it into fez oh my gosh isn't that Genius. fantastic Genius. i love that I love that because it keeps, it just keeps me guessing. Cause I was guessing throughout the whole series. Where is that dude from? I was too. I mean, you want, you want to go stereotypical, right? Like he looks Canadian. Oh. Exactly. Oh my God. I was going to say Scandinavian, <laughs> but, but then my second was, was French or, you know. Right. Right. Exactly. Obviously. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's accent on along to this second question from the Reddit <laughs> advice column. 
and it says, I need advice from, I don't know why they made it all sarcastic, but I need advice from strangers. So a few weeks ago, I got a message from a scammer trying to be my sugar daddy. I knew it was a scam from the beginning. And since I am lonely and bored, upside down smiley face, I let the scammer dude know I was aware of his scam. And if he admitted he was a scammer, I would give him tips and be his friend. It took him a little while, but eventually he admitted to it. It turns out he is a pretty neat guy who is around my age and lives in Africa. We video chat sometimes and text regularly. Actually, we have become pretty close friends. He let me know that the reason he was trying to scam people is because he comes from a poor family. And since he is the oldest of his many siblings and his parents are too old to work much, it is up to him to bring in money to their home. Okay, so what I need advice on from you lovely strangers, I want to fly my poor African friend to the States and let him stay with me for a couple of months, help him get a decent job here, make and save money, gain experience, possibly even get him a better education. I have the means to buy him a passport and ticket here. It would make a tremendous difference in this person's life. Do you think this is a good idea? I'll, there's more, but I'll leave it at that. So Kim, what are your thoughts? so far on this situation tell this person to get tlc tell them to watch every fucking episode of 90 day fiance i could even tell you the names of the couples of all of the people that did this stuff oh my god this is so 90 day fiance right there oh red flag red flag red flag red flag you know, I, I smelled it too. I was like, is that my wife's cooking? No, that's 90 day fiance vibes <laughs> right over here. The scent of betrayal and deceit right there. Oh man. And maybe we'll have to do a 98 day fiance podcast. Cause I also have viewed many seasons of 90 day fiance and oh boy. What? My hus we watched them. My husband and I watched them together. We watched 90 Day. We watched The Pillow Talk. We watched Married at First Sight. Just my husband, he hates the romantic parts of Married at First Sight. He likes the train wrecks. I cry during the weddings. I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, I like them. I like them. I hope they stay together. Well, I've learned after a couple seasons that unfortunately chances are the couples i like are not going to stay together just yes. like and i already we, I, we're watching season 11 now and just to show what a fan i am i bought it off of um amazon because we don't we can't get lifetime to oh, watch wow. it wow so the couple that I'm rooting for, I'm already con convinced that I don't want to get too excited because I love them. Mm. That I don't, I, I want them to make it. Don't get me wrong. I want them to. But then I look at the big picture and I look at history and I realize the couple that usually looks the least likely to make it is the one that's going to make it. That's very true. That's what I've seen as well. So for this, this couple, if you will, of mm -hmm. these two friends, this person wanting to buy this other person no. a plane ticket, you would say no, you wouldn't do oh, it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, I, I would have to meet. It would be just like when I did online dating. Right. And before I met my husband on online dating, I would communicate talk on the phone baby steps then meet halfway so when it turned out to be a train wreck at wherever the place was i could get the fuck out of there and get safely home oh i like that so you're saying meet somewhere in the yep. middle of the atlantic ocean yep that way they can part ways and start swimming back if things go awry and pay for your own shit that way you there's no oh my god you know i bought you some anti right. some st salt remover to take the salt out of the ocean water that you know you drank you know there's none of that because exactly bring bring your own you're bring you your might own. be african and i'm american but we're mm -hmm. gonna go dutch on everything <laughs> 
So yes, 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 be prepared yes. for that. That's excellent. Wow. What wonderful advice. Thank you so much, Kim. And you know what? That, that was the note that just took us to the finish line. Touchdown, Stefan and Kim. Kim, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was a real treat. Oh, you, this made my night. This oh. made my, I don't even know how much. So much. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for oh. taking a chance on a, a super fan who bugged you and bugged you and bugged you. And <laughs> some, the, sometimes persistence really pays off. And in this case, I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all. No problem at all. And, and um, it was, I, I don't know. I, well, maybe I shouldn't trust my gut. Cause I also might be the type of guy that flies a Nigerian prince over here, but <laughs> it seemed like you had a very good heart and are a very good person. So I was very happy to have you on the pod. And I know you were nervous, but you did. I, I won't even wait until we finish the episode and stop recording. You did phenomenal. A plus like 97 oh out of a hundred you did get knocked off because of the screen but that that was a little snafu that was beyond compare so or beyond that was my that was my computer though that wasn't me well you know what making excuses that's another three points off so we're going down if you want to keep talking shit no (laughs) i'll take i'll take that three points back (laughs) no no you're you're good but excellent excellent job thank you so much do you what would you like to plug where can people follow you what have you got going on um follow me on twitter at t-e-n-g-e-d um i'm on facebook my instagram is so lame that i i try really hard but i'm not successful my life is on facebook my pictures my business and my books so um kimberly scott laned <laughs> that's right <laughs> not Fac- Lena. i like that better but i mean I didn't even tell you people have made us lined, lay nod, leaned. I'm like, no, it, it's so simple. L E I Hawaiian flower necklace, a lay, nad, gonad, nad. Man, these people, these freaking people. Well, yep. you know what? You, you know what? You straightened the score on a comedy advice podcast. So people now know. And once, you know what, if they, I'll make the promo clip too of me Mm -hmm. saying it wrong. I'm going to do the same thing because I, oh God, sure. Brad Sherwood. I also pronounced his name wrong, like a big dumb idiot, but you know what? That's okay. And you, you can also just share that clip with them whenever they say it wrong. Be like, it's this. So I don't, I don't care it to me when I, when I say it, I say it and then I automatically spell it. I don't even wait. Because I know they're going to ask, how do you spell it? Just like the street I lived on as a little girl. I was just like 17 Malt B, M-A-L-T-B-I-E. So I say Kim Lanad, L-E-I-N-A-D. So it's like saying it and then spelling it. Just so that they don't have to ask. I'm just going to call you Kim Daniel backwards. So that's (laughs) just to keep it simple. And you're Stefan Dark Lord. Da, yeah, that's of, the, right. uh, of the underworld dark lord of the underworld oh my god that sounds so much cooler than me i love it well awesome thank you kim so much links are gonna be in the show notes for all that good stuff so guys listeners i didn't forget about you no nope, no i didn't or watchers no watchers is the creepy one <laughs> viewers <laughs> viewers is the non-creepy one thank you viewers you guys are just such decadent little treats i i'm full i don't know i almost don't need to eat dinner because you guys have filled me up with joy and as well as kim she was the entree you guys were like the dessert Mm, my little truffles thank you guys so much for listening and tune in i can't wait to see you next week so thank you so much kim do you want to say goodbye do you want to say adieu adieu adios hasta la vista until next time (laughs) <laughs> wonderful wonderful all right and that is the episode ladies gentlemen 
mole people. You guys were incredible. Thank you so much for listening to the whole thing. You did it in one sitting. No, maybe you had to come back. If you did it in one sitting, a whole 72 ounce episode, you get a free shirt that said, I listened to all of a comedy advice podcast. And all I got was this lousy (laughs) t-shirt. But no, seriously, guys, you guys are amazing and girls and mole people, less so mole people. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the support you give me, all the comments, all the DMs, all the reviews. If you haven't yet, please comment, leave a review, DM me, be like, hey, Steph, loved that app, loved it, and or didn't like it, whatever, I don't care. I'll take any attention, really. So just slide in there. Uh, leave a review, subscribe on YouTube. I'm trying to catch that up. And then if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them over. If you guys have any guests that you think would be good potentials that, to be alongside old Steffi cakes, old chocolate chip Steffi, that sounds like an hors d'oeuvre that is actually kind of appetizing. I'll take the chocolate chip Steffi. Okay, yeah. But anyway, um, I'll submit that to Cracker Barrel. You guys submit your reviews, subscribe, send me some love in whatever way you can, and I will continue to outpour my love all over you. Just drizzle you with some nice Steph, Steffi cakes. Love. All right. Well, I think I'm out of words, so I'll let you guys go. Big old gooch smooch. Love you guys.